Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Last time I left off, I had automated the production of citrons in my little farm back there, but I hadn't yet done anything about these uh, trees, because of course, when you're trying to make ethanol, you need to have some kind of fruit juice, uh, but you also need some sort of plant to make the uh, biomass out of. And I had chosen these red maple saplings, which of course come from these red maple trees, but I hadn't automated their production, so I'd have to go grow a bunch of them and harvest the saplings and put them in there. And you know, every time I'd go away for a couple of hours, it would run out of saplings and I'd stop making ethanol. So I decided to automate the production of these trees using Buildcraft robots. And that's what we see over here is all these little robot guys. And uh, what I'm going to do in this episode is walk through this whole setup and talk about how you could do something similar. So to start that process, I'm going to head back over to my powered machines room in my other house. Here I am with my assembly table and my lasers. And this is where the process really begins. To make a robot, uh, you need to, let me grab the recipe here. Da, 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 da. You need some iron, you need one of these redstone crystals and a pair of these diamond chipsets. The redstone crystal, you just put a block of redstone on your assembly table and uh, it'll start powering up to make it into this crystal with a lot of power. That's 10 million RF to make one of these redstone crystals. Uh, to make the diamond chipsets, it's pretty straightforward, still need a fair bit of power, not quite that much. Uh, with diamond and redstone, you get those guys. So once you've made all of those pieces, you've now got yourself the parts to make a robot. But what you get is this generic robot that doesn't actually do anything. So in order to get a robot that actually works, you need an integration table. And what you'll do is you'll put your robot in the center here, and then you'll have to pick what kind of board you want to make and drop it over here. In order to make the board, uh, here's one of these generic redstone boards, you get some paper, redstone dust, that gets you a redstone board, and you take the redstone board and drop it on a programming table. And if you pop it in right here, this whole display will be filled up with all of these things over here, which are the boards for all of the different kinds of robots. So I found for my setup, I needed to make a, uh, let's see here, uh, no, not that one, not that one, not that one. A lumberjack. I needed one of those to cut down the trees, which of course will make all the leaves decay and start dropping saplings. So I needed a picker to go grab all the saplings and uh, the wood and everything else that falls down. And then I also needed a planter to go take some of the saplings and go put them back again so that another tree will grow and continue the process. And of course, since each tree drops more than one sapling, I wind up with a net surplus of saplings. So make your basic parts on your assembly table, make your different boards for each kind of robot on your programming table, and then put them all together on your integration table. You will also need uh, some docking stations. So docking stations are just a gold chip set with some iron ingots, and uh, you'll need probably one for each robot plus one for each place that a robot's going to put something down or pick something up. And I'll talk in more detail about exactly what that means later on. So I've already gone through and made all my robots, went through all the different steps, and I've got them all over at the other house. So I'm going to run back there and show how they're set up. Okay, here I am back again. Uh, I've uh, got all my robots locked back into their docks because I want to talk about uh, exactly how they work. And I've reset a few things so you can see them kind of doing their initial setup. Uh, here's my lumberjack robot. He's sitting on a robot dock, which is in front of an emerald AND gate. And the emerald AND gate has all the programming. Along the left-hand side, there's all the uh, conditions that it's going to try and detect. And on the right-hand side are all the instructions. Right now, I've got a switch in the down position, a lever in the down position, which means uh, it's turning, sending a redstone signal across, and the gate is detecting that, and therefore calling the robot back to its station. I've also got uh, some instructions if the redstone signal goes off, which is to work in area and to load and unload in area. So let's talk a bit about how you define these areas by map location. 
over here, I've got set up some landmarks, and uh, I've used these a bunch, talking about uh, the filler. But they are also used for the robot. So you take your map in hand, recipe is just uh, paper around some kind of yellow die, and you right-click on the landmark. And your map will change to reflect whatever area is outlined by the filler. So in this case, it's telling me the corner is at 18, 122, 194, and its size is 7 by 3 by 3. If I were to move, say, this one over here, reestablish the box, reset the map, the map now says 7 by 3 by 6, because now, of course, it's a bigger area. So when you're defining your areas for your robots, there's a couple of different kinds of areas that the different robots care about. My lumberjack wants to know where should it look for wood blocks to harvest. So I made an area that encompasses everything from this block here all the way over to that block down there and all the way up to the height of the trees and in fact well beyond the height of the trees just in case one of them grows a little taller than usual. And then having made that map location I just drop it right here and that set the map location so 12 by 12 by 18 tall. This other one is uh, defining where this guy should find a, an axe or a hatchet. And that points to this docking station right here, which of course is sitting on top of a wooden transport pipe or an extraction pipe. That's going to allow the robot to get at this hatchet, which is sitting in this box here. This is also the location where robots come to get uh, saplings to plant. So of course I've got a bunch of saplings in there too. And when I look at this Emerald Ann gate, it says when there's no redstone signal, allow robots to pick up items, either the hatchet or the sapling. And that way, either the lumberjack robot or the planter robot can land on this station and they'll pick up whatever it is that they want and go to work. Right now you can see this has got green dots on the corners. When one of the robots wants to land here, even though it's still far away, it'll change this to be yellow dots, meaning I've claimed this docking station. And then when it's landed, it'll change to red. So if we could see underneath each of these robots over here, they'd see red dots. And then when it takes off again, it will eventually go back to green when the robot releases its claim. So only robot, one robot at a time will be able to claim the docking station. And any robot who would also like to use it just has to wait, and they'll hang around until it clears and the robot can come and get it. So that defines the work for our lumberjack. So let me turn him on. First thing he's going to do is go off and get a hatchet. Now he's got the hatchet, and he's going to go and start harvesting the trees. Now, I don't want to accumulate a lot of uh, saplings in this box, so I'm going to put a dirt block there so that there's nowhere for the uh, extra saplings to go. And this guy's going to be working away, chopping down the tree. But you notice, being a lumberjack, he's not picking anything up. You need a picker to do that. So the picker's programming is, again, to come back to its station whenever there's a redstone signal, which there is right now. And when there isn't a redstone signal, it's going to work in area. Now this area is 9 by 9 by 2, which means it's basically encompassing just this area here up and over these planter boxes so that it's not going to wander too far away and go find you know eggs or flowers or whatever way off in the fields here. But it is going to go down to the ground to pick up things like that apple over there and up onto the planter to pick up, say, that sapling right there. And then when he's done he's going to load and unload in this area, which actually is uh, this guy right here on the, on the top of this docking station. So this docking station is sitting on top of a diamond transport pipe. Diamond transport pipes are the sorting pipe. And as you can see, they've got a red side and a blue side, a black side. There's also a green and yellow sides, which are not being used at the moment. And this top side is white. So if we look at this, we can say, I want all of the wood and apples to go to the red side and I want all of the saplings to go to the blue side and the green and yellow aren't connected the white's not connected the black is connected though but there's nothing in here which means anything else or if you can't put something to the side that it's specified it should go to the black side 
So what that's ultimately going to mean is this is a void transport pipe, which just destroys anything that goes into it. So the stuff going to the red side, the apple and the wood, is just going to get completely destroyed. Wasteful, yes. I could probably do something useful with them, yes. But I'm not worried about that right now. Sooner or later, if ever, I'll get around to doing something with that. But not right now. On the blue side, I'm going to have those saplings going into the box. But I've already got a bunch of saplings in here. In fact, let me just fill that up. Now, saplings can't go into the box because there's no room for saplings in the box because I've got it mostly filled with dirt and the rest of it filled with saplings. So what happens? Well, looking at the configuration of my pipe, this doesn't exist, this doesn't exist, this doesn't exist, which means the black side is the only side left and it has no filter, which means anything can go down there, but nothing as a first choice if it's specified somewhere else. So that means all the saplings that ought to go to the blue, now that there's no room, will go to the black. Now, the black goes down into my piping system that goes down to the rest of the house and ultimately into the ethanol production plant. So I'm keeping enough saplings here to allow them to get picked up and replanted, but everything else is going downstairs to be sent off to ethanol production. So let me turn on my picker and have him pick everything up. Now, of course, I've been stepping over things and picking things up that I oughtn't pick up because they're things for him to pick up. So I'm just going to drop them on the floor and we'll watch the uh, picker come around and grab them when he's done with whatever he's doing. Oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> I turned on the wrong robot. Turned on the planter rather than the picker, but that's all right. Uh, we can see what he did. Uh, he goes and grabs a sapling and wherever there's an empty dirt block, he's going to go plant it. And when he's done, he's going to go grab another sapling and just kind of hang out and wait for an open spot to come up. And uh, yeah, there he is. There's the picker. Uh, so the picker, you can see, is grabbing all the stuff, putting it up on his little roof as he carries it around. And when he's gotten everything there is to pick up in this area, he's going to head back over uh, to my diamond pipe and drop everything off. We can see him grab that last sapling. I think it's the last one. Well, he sees something else. Oh, it must be another one I can't see over there. And here he comes around. There he goes. So now as he drops the stuff off, it's going to go downstairs to ethanol production. And the wood and the apples are going into the void pipe. Oh, it looks like the lumberjack has woken up and noticed that there's a couple of trees needing harvesting. Um, all of the robots sleep for a while between operations, uh, and they wake up every couple of minutes. So you shouldn't expect them to instantly jump up as soon as there's something to do. Um, you can make them instantly like check 20 times a second to see if there's any work to do. But of course, that uses power for them to do the check, and so you'll wind up having them use a lot more power than they need to. Uh, anyway, so the... Uh, yeah. Anyway, the map locations basically work as you'd expect them to, right? Uh, the picker's got a location that includes a little bit broader up on top and down on the ground here. The uh, planter has a location that's 9x9x2, nine by nine by which is just the area that includes this these two planters, uh, including the dirt block itself, so down here, as well as one block up, so that it's going to encompass the dirt block and everything on top of it as potential planting locations. And of course, it's smart enough to know that you can't plant on cobblestone and you can't plant on microblocks. So it's not going to try and do that. It's just going to plant where it's sensible to plant. Um, and that's it for what's going on up here. And that's uh, basically how the trees get planted and harvested over and over again. Let's go take a look at the piping system that results from all this. So as I go down one level and uh, walk over here, there's one, and there's the other. Uh, no, that's not the other. Where's the other? There it is. Um, I've got blue kinesis pipe coming up from the basement, which is going to transmit uh, power up to recharge the robots as and when they need it. Robots use very little power, and they only use power when they're doing operations. So most of the time that they're just kind of sitting around waiting for the trees to grow, they're not using power, which is great. The golden transport pipe is coming down from that diamond pipe, so the black side 
of the diamond pipe is going to go through this transport pipe down into the basement. So as we head down there, we can see it's going to come down through this wall. It's actually going right through the floor right there. And that's going to go off in this direction through here until it gets to this box. Now, the current bottleneck in my ethanol production is the saplings. So I expect, and indeed I see, that this box is empty. As new saplings get harvested, they'll come shooting down this pipe and they'll land in this box, but almost immediately, this retriever, which is underneath my fermenter, is going to say, hey, get me those saplings, because looking inside the fermenter, the slot for saplings is empty. This is okay. For any process like this, where you've got lots of different stages and steps that operate at different speeds, you're always going to have some place be the bottleneck. And I don't mind the bottleneck being sapling production because I'm producing lots and lots of ethanol, which is plenty fine for what I'm using it for, which is almost nothing, to be honest, at this point. Uh, okay, so walking through these machines, uh, my farm... Uh, I've changed the piping a little bit since I talked about it last time. The farm produces citrons, which I know are not going to be a bottleneck, so I need a place to catch them and store them. Uh, it looks like that's doing pretty darn well at keeping ahead of things. The retriever is going to suck the citrons into this machine to keep this inventory full, which it's doing pretty well. It takes four at a time, which is why these two are missing. Uh, oh, and there it goes. It's getting the last couple. There it goes. So that's producing the mulch, which gets pumped out immediately, and the fruit juice, which gets pumped out as quickly as maybe, but it's blocked up on this guy, which is fine because I don't want this thing running a bunch uh, when it's not needed to run. The mulch is all backed up. I've got a void upgrade, which, uh, as it says, destroys excess items because I don't want mulch building up in here blocking its production because then the fruit juice isn't going to flow, and the fruit, fruit juice and mulch both together come over here and get used. But the fruit juice gets consumed at a much higher rate than the mulch does. So if I didn't have the excess mulch getting destroyed, eventually this machine would get stopped up and stop producing anything, neither mulch nor fruit juice. The fruit juice would get used up while the mulch is still waiting around, but then the mulch wouldn't get used anymore because there's no more fruit juice. So you kind of need to dispose of the extra mulch that you're producing in order not to block the production of the fruit juice. Anyway, underneath is where that pipe comes up, and it has its own retriever to keep this spot filled, so long as there are saplings to fill it. Once that happens, the biomass gets in here, and off we go through the rest of the process. So that's now the new production system. Uh, which I think is kind of the whole deal. So I've got my uh, robots working up here. The lumberjack knocks down the trees when the trees are there to be knocked down. The planter puts them back again so they can grow up again. And the picker grabs all the saplings and everything else that uh, falls to the ground, dumps it in the box. The box keeps the supply for the planter to plant, and the rest of them go down to ethanol production. One thing to mention, why is it that I've got all these saplings in a row here when clearly the trees will never, never grow with all of these saplings in a row? Well, remember, saplings take a while to grow, and I don't keep them around for really any length of time. I have the robots knock them down pretty much immediately. So what, by having them so packed in together, I can grow a lot more trees a lot more rapidly because all of the saplings are waiting their turn. So even if there's a tree that grows up right next to, say, this one, and this guy's now ready, but there's a tree here, that tree's going to be gone real soon. So this one will be able to grow in and take its place very shortly thereafter, uh, which is definitely a good thing. I don't want to dedicate a tremendous amount of space to growing trees, uh, not the least of which is because you know, the robots use up power to fly around and go harvest them. So... Uh, that's one reason. And second, I don't have a lot of space. I'm up on a roof of a building, so there's just not a lot of room. Uh, and so that makes it so you can grow them a lot more densely than you could otherwise. I didn't do that with the citrons because what I needed there was the leaves, not the trees. And I grew the trees as closely together as I could to get them so that I make basically a solid block of citron leaves that's as big as I need. In fact, it's bigger than I need. It's not the bottleneck of my production. 
Anyway, so that's build craft robots uh, harvesting trees and leading into my ethanol production. Uh, one last thing to mention is uh, I wanted to get rid of last of those torches, so a little bit more decorative stuff. Uh, these are glowstone blocks, which I have uh, crafted into a neat looking pattern using the chisel mod, of course. And uh, yeah, so we're going to say this and here we go. Uh, I think I used this pattern here, glowstone blocks with glass, and then uh, sliced them real thin with my microblock saw and put them down as, um, you know, kind of little flat roof lights. And uh, I put a bunch over there. I did not put a bunch here because remember, this is a rhyolite slab and it's on the bottom side of the meter which means mobs can't spawn on it because they can't spawn on it on something that doesn't have a solid block on its top surface. But all of the surrounding area did have solid blocks on its top surface because of course they're half a meter taller. Except if you look carefully, they're not half a meter taller. I went ahead and added covers, andesite covers, the thinnest possible slice of a microblock to the top of each and every one of the blocks that make up the border of the roof here. Which means this doesn't have a solid block on its top surface, and neither does this. Because this block, this meter, is actually all the way up uh, another, oops, yeah, let's see here. So if I try to put this down, it goes all the way up there. This whole space underneath here is the 7 eighths of a meter that is the rest of this micro block. So mobs can't spawn there either because it's not a block that has a solid surface on its top. And so it just gets ignored for purposes of spawning monsters. Finally, I went and added some lights to the top of this tower, added some lights to the top of that tower, and that's it, no more torches. Hooray, all gone. The one last thing I did that I wanted to talk about uh, I can't talk about when it's dark because you can't see it. That's better. I have started filling in the... Um, what? Oh, yeah. I've started filling in um, this uh, terraced area. I got confused for a moment because I saw this one ending and I was like, I thought I got further than that. Anyway, uh, I started filling in this terraced area so that I've got... Uh, the terrace pretty much filled in all the way around on the first layer of terracing. So I've got kind of a nice green lawn that proceeds pretty much all the way around the building and goes three meters down. Uh, I ran out of quartzite just in time to not quite finish this side. So I have to go find some more and put it in there. But very conveniently, uh, you can see I've got some mobs here who could not get up to this building. Now, of course, I haven't quite lit everything up yet so that uh, these areas are still possible for mobs to spawn on. And, of course, they could still just walk up the stairs. But uh, once I've got some lighting on this area out here, which I'll probably find some interesting decorative lighting to do along the quartzite retaining wall there, I will then have made it so that the mobs can't spawn even in the immediate vicinity of my house, which means I could walk outdoors anywhere except the front door uh, at any time without danger. And I'll work out something to do to keep the mobs away from the, the front steps here. Anyway, that is it. Uh, talked about build craft robots, a little bit more about lighting with a micro blocks. And um, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to know when the next one comes out, hit the subscribe button and I will talk to you later.